Hai. Hai. Ah. I am cautioning you against the stresses of watching screen and I am making you watch on the screen. Believe me, left to me, I would love to have you people in front of you, me and talk to you face to face, understanding every aspect of the two way communication. But knowing that there are so many limitations and we cannot do that, even a session on stresses of watching screen has to be done on the screen, then only it will reach uh, people. That is the irony of life. Okay. Beginning of this century, uh, usage of the screen increased significantly. Before that, we had only the, uh, you know, tabletop computers. So people who had a job where they had to work on the computer, they would come sit down, sit on their desk and work on the computer. Then they would get up and go and have a cup of tea or go to the washroom or take a lunch break. Or they would have meetings with uh, each other where they had to, you know, shut down their computer and go and sit face to face with their colleagues. But with the coming of laptops first, then tablets and then smartphones. What happened was slowly things started moving more and more towards the usage of the screen as a means for communication. So more and more people starting from students who started taking coaching you know, online, going on to consultations with doctors or other professionals, going on to so many people whose work involved working on the computer, their usage of the screen increased. Even then, I feel it was not all that bad till our great COVID-19 struck us. March of 2020 has been a significant, you know, milestone in the lives of all of us in terms of mental health, in terms of physical health, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of relationships. Take a simple thing that before March 2020, parents used to tell children, don't spend so much time on the computer or on the phone. Go out and play. Go to school, attend classes, come back, sit and do your homework, interact with people, sit with the family at the dinner table. And for a short while, if you want, you can watch some movie or something on the TV or on your uh, you know, laptop. But come March 2020 and parents started telling the children, why are you roaming around? Go back and sit in front of your laptop or your phone. Classes became online. Work for many, many, many people became online. People who used to commute, grumble of traffic jams and this and that, and they used to take one hour, two hours to reach office. Now we're sitting at home and working because of the lockdowns and all. Anyway, we thought that lockdowns will come and they will go. It can't be permanent, obviously, no. The virus has to come under control. So some day will come, then the situation will be better, then the government will remove its uh, you know, restrictions and you can move out freely. And your employers will say, come back, let's start all meeting together in the office and working. But did that happen? No. What actually happened uh, was that many, 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 for example, schools for more than two years continued to have only online uh, classes, even when there were no government restrictions. Parents were not willing to send their children to school. Employers said, you know, you are working from home. So you are saving one, two, three hours of commuting. Now you better put in extra hours. So people were encouraged to work from home, WFH. And they were getting the same salary. So they felt that they are happy. But the one factor that was not taken into account is the stress of watching screens on a continuous basis. And this includes your computer, your laptop, your tablet, your TV, and your smartphone. All of these have left a permanent impact on us. We have started overdoing anything and everything now. 
people are doing binge watching of YouTube, Netflix, movies, whatever you name it. Children are spending more and more and more time in front of the uh, screen. Elderly people are, have decided that it's far better to sit at home and have maybe a big screen TV or a good laptop and we can you know, keep ourselves engaged from morning to evening. We don't have to worry about anything uh, else. So what is the impact? Achha, there has already been some concern and some you know, comments and all that made on the impact of long-term impact of screen uh, watching, meaning to uh, say addiction, for example. You are aware, I have mentioned this myself to you, that uh, addiction to gaming, technology gaming, has been declared as a mental disorder by World Health Organization. It has been declared as illegal by the Chinese government. Nimhans, our premier institution, after having a department of de-addiction from alcohol, de-addiction from cigarettes and de-addiction from drugs, established nine years back a separate department called Shut Cleaning, Service for Healthy Use of Technology, where they deal with the de-addiction for being on the screen, people who just cannot get away from it. Okay. Today, I'm not going to be talking about addiction. I'm talking about the day-to-day -day effects. See, for example, if you take alcohol, a person takes a long time to become addicted to alcohol. Then he becomes an alcoholic. There are innumerable others who claim to be social drinkers. And they drink. Sometimes they don't want to. They can refrain from drinking. Sometimes they say that, you know, doctor has told me to cut down, so I cut down. For various reasons, people drink less or more. And they claim, I am not dependent on alcohol. I'm not an addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I enjoy my drink. Fine. But... The important thing to take into account is when the person is under influence of alcohol, how does he behave? His mind is numbed. His characteristics take a change. The very soft and docile person may get into a road rage on the road and may bang up his vehicle and get into trouble with the cops. He may come back and argue with his wife and uh, children. He may sulk, sit and cry for long hours. Various manifestations of being under the influence of alcohol, right? The same thing happens when you are under the influence of continuous watching on the screen. It makes you have certain things. You may not be an addict. You may say, no, I only sit in front of the screen to do my work or to do my studies or to do whatever it is. Beyond that, I don't do it. But even if that is long, so for example, if you are WFH, you're obviously spending 6, 8, 10, 12 hours maybe, I don't know, in front of the screen. If you're a student who's you know, studying from home or taking online coaching or whatever it is, again, you're spending so many hours in front of the screen. What is it that starts with this? And also, before I go deeper, I also want to tell you that there are so many social drinkers who over a period of time become alcoholics. The same day, there are so many people who are in front of screens today claiming that I am not addicted, but tomorrow they may become addicted. That caution and that thing also has to be kept in mind. The other factor which experts have told us is how we use the screen is more important than how much we use them. There are people who may be in front of the screen for 8 hours, 10 hours. But if they know how to use it, they can still get away without too many effects. Those who are not aware, who are ignorant of it, and they just say, okay, my work is on the screen or my entertainment is on the screen, so that's why I'm doing it. They are the ones who will suffer, uh, you know, uh, uh, not. And the other thing which you cannot deny is that there is big money in anything and everything to do with internet and social media. So there are these 
top-notch experts who are continuously researching on how to attract you to become an addict, be it for gaming, be it for pornography, be it for social media, be it for browsing on the net for things which you don't want and eventually ending up buying uh, things which is a cut in your pocket. Earlier, you used to go to the shop or the mall, look around, and if you are not convinced, you would not buy and come back. But here you are bombarded with advertisements. This offer is only for today till 4 p.m. You will get so many percent discount if you do this. You will never get it. This is a chance of a lifetime. And you jump onto it. You spend money unnecessarily. You don't even realize that all this is part of your screen time that you are uh, you know, spending. Take games, for example. There are such subtle ways in which they say, oh, you played this game and you got so much score. Fantastic. Do you know that out of 17,432 people in the country playing this game, you stand number 172. Wow, out of so many people. And if you come below, if you can knock that 100 thing and come below 99, your name will be flashing on this, this, this. You will be declared as one of the champions. See how attractive and intoxicating uh, it is. And that is how people start getting into the uh, thing. The one important thing that I wanted to tell you was that we have five senses, right? We can see, we can hear, we can touch, we can smell, and we can taste. Out of these, the predominant is the visual, seeing. There are even proverbs which say, seeing is believing. Now, if you are using more of your eyesight into something, for example, there's some guru or some motivational speaker or somebody, you know, whom you would like to listen to and learn from. Nothing is preventing you from turning away from the screen and only listening to the talk. But check yourself. Whether you like it or not, you know what you do. You keep staring at the screen. There is one man talking. You have seen him. You become familiar with uh, him. Now, why do you need to keep staring at that person? And that is one of the reasons why, despite its 150-year history, radio has never been addictive as compared to TV and now you know, uh, mobile phones and laptops and things like that. Because the visual part of it takes you deep into the uh, thing. Then you feel like watching things. You have a friend or you have an ex-friend and you log on to their social media to see what that person is doing. You can't resist. And once you see him or her apparently doing great things, then you want to compete. You want to put something on the social media and see how it is going. Then you want to compare with others. Then you want to see what your friends have felt about it. It's an unending process. We need to be very consciously aware of it. The strain on the eyes can play havoc. As I told you, this whole concept and the, you know, the intense watching is about 10 to 15 years old. The long-term effects of this will be visible to us another 20, 30 years from now. That is when people will wake up and say, oh, in 2023, I used to spend so much time on the screen. And because of that, today is what is happening. Your Elders would have guided you wisely saying that you are young, you are fit. But don't eat junk food. Eat food on time. Have nutritious food. But when you ignore them and you eat whatever junk food whenever you want, you even starve yourself, nothing happens to you. So you are so happy and confident. To me, nothing happens. But what will happen when your digestive system is continuously being corroded? When you become older... When your body starts getting weak, that is the time it will affect you. No? The same thing happens over uh, here. But 
there is a fantastic factor which overcomes everything that I am trying to say. And that is called FOMO. Fear of missing out. F-O-M-O. It's literally, I tell you, a four-letter word. The moment you get this craving that if I don't check this out, I will be left out. I will be missing something. Unless it is directly to do with the work or the instructions given to you or your studies or your teacher's message or whatever it is. There is no question of you know, missing out on something. In fact, somebody very wisely and nicely came out with Jomo. Joy of missing out. You'll have friends who will tell you, I had 50 uh, you know, social media uh, uh, groups. And one fine day I sat down and I deleted 45 of them. And I'm so happy now. That is the joy of missing out. I would rather not be involved in the gossip or these or unwanted information and stuff like uh, that. There is nothing which can overcome the human touch. It cannot be substituted by the technology. The same way as I keep reminding people who are going deeper and deeper into artificial intelligence. Excellent. You found a new tool. You found something fantastic. And from November last year, since chat GBT came in and many more of that genre are coming up, People are relying more and more and more only on artificial intelligence. But my question to you is that your creator gave you a real intelligence. What happened to that? Artificial intelligence can only be an add-on. Can be a substitute. It is like I am having difficulty walking. I use a walking stick. But only as long as I am having difficulty walking. And the stick can never become my leg, right? So artificial intelligence can never replace the real intelligence. You may not believe me now, but 50 years from now, I will definitely not be here. But if you are around, you will mark my birds on this. Okay. So having said that, I thought maybe let's do a little bit of a sort of checklist type of uh, uh, thing that how much are you as an individual straining uh, yourself? depending on your usage of be it a laptop or TV or smartphone or whatever it is. Here is a quick little exercise. Check out how much you are straining yourself. First question. Do you check your phone first thing when you wake up and last thing you do before going to sleep? Please be truthful to yourself. If it is yes, Put a tick mark. Score yourself one. Do you check phone last thing and sleep with your phone next to you? You can't put away the phone even on a desk or in the other room. You have checked your phone till your bedtime. Now it's time to sleep, but do you keep it to you? If yes, your score goes up to two. Do you grab your phone when you hear a notification or text message or WhatsApp? Whatever important thing you are doing, whoever you are talking to face to face, you leave that and you grab your phone. You cannot wait. Nothing will happen if you wait two, three, four minutes, but do you grab it? Third point and your score is going higher. Do you feel anxious if you leave your house without your phone? If you have to walk out from your cabin and go and sit somewhere else for a meeting, if you are taking a break and you are going down to the cafeteria or uh, a restaurant to have a meal and come back, do you feel uneasy? Do you feel anxious because you have left it behind? Does your phone interfere in eating, going to the bathroom, walking, driving? One of the most ridiculous things that I see on the road is a person riding a motorbike with his head at 45 degrees angle. And I wonder, is this person having some severe spondylitis or something that he cannot straighten out his neck? But when I look closely, I realize 
that he has got this mobile phone perched between his shoulder and his head and he is turning his head to ensure that the mobile stays in place and he's carrying out a conversation heaven and hell will not fall down if you wait till you reach your destination or even if you stop for a moment and you know tend to that call and get back isn't it the next one do you use your phone instead of interacting with people around you i have seen people in the same house same family somebody is in the other room instead of getting up walking and talking to the uh, person they send a message or they make a call why is it absolutely necessary that all your interaction has to be done through the technology next one do you find yourself consciously or even unconsciously reaching for touching or handling your phone you're busy doing something else you may be driving you may be attending a meeting you may be doing studies you may be doing whatever it is but subconsciously without realizing do you find that you have the phone in your hand and you are touching it and you are moving it or whatever it is another point of concern is would you rather connect to your phone than to other people or yourself as the phone becomes so important in your life that you would rather connect to the phone for anything and uh, everything that is something which i want you to please keep in uh, uh, mind these are basic eight points which i listed out if you have said yes to one two three four of them please do something about it i don't want to be a preacher or i don't want to say i told you and this and that and be a doomsday prophet but i definitely request you that you owe it to yourself to do something about uh, it the faster you can switch off is the better it is we also have a small uh, graphic here which shows the effect of a person who spends too much time on the uh, uh you know in front of the uh, uh, screen this is called ergonomics that means the science of ensuring that non living beings are made to suit the requirements of living beings place the monitor directly in front of you when on the keyboard tilt or swivel the monitor screen to eliminate reflections on the screen or add an anti glare filter sit with head and neck in upright position even while on the phone not just on the laptop keep your shoulders relaxed and elbows close to the body position the top of monitor screen at or above eye level very few of us do that we are inevitably looking down at our laptop or our phone and it should be at least an arm's length away maintain a proper posture having 90 degrees or greater angle at the hips and knees while the feet are supported by the floor your feet should not be dangling in the air select a chair that allows clearance behind knees when seated against the backrest adjust the height of the chair to achieve a proper posture use the backrest of the chair to achieve a proper posture and adjust the keyboard or chair height to keep forearms wrists and hands in a straight line when using the keyboard you can see that on the graphic over here how it needs to be in a straight line and at the same angle this is just one of the so many things it just struck me the other day i was browsing through some information and i found this so i thought i will share it with you there are so many ways and means to ensure that your continuously being in front of the screen is not going to have harmful effects on either your physical or your mental health as i mentioned to you the first thing is eyes 
human eyes are not made for staring at something which is 12 inches away. And that is what used to happen even till two generations back. 90% of the time was spent in looking at things which were at least a few feet, most likely a few meters away from you. Including people living in open areas and villages and all that used to look at the sky, the clouds, the trees, the landscape. Today we are shutting ourselves in. Please do not do that. Counter that. I have mentioned to you earlier about techniques like Tratak, T-R-A-T-A-K. Google it and see. Such lovely traditional knowledge which we have acquired from our sages of long back. We have forgotten it. Or even if we know it, we are not actually practicing it. So that will ensure that your eyes are rested. That graphic that I showed you ensures that, you know, your shoulders, your neck, your elbows, your fingers are relaxed for some time. And most important, please take breaks. Do not spend too much time continuously staring at a screen. Generally also, the bigger the screen, the more relaxed your eyes are. But unfortunately, we find that most of us are restricting our whole life to six inches of the mobile screen. Even people who have a computer or laptop prefer to work on the mobile because it's far more convenient than going and sitting on a chair and opening the laptop and you know, connecting it and stuff like that. But that shortcut that you're taking can have very bad effects, you know, in the uh, long run. So every part of your body needs relaxation from time to time. Take a break and ensure that you are giving that relaxation which is needed very badly. And do not forget your mental health. Staring continuously at a computer or a mobile phone, you may not believe me today, it actually affects even your mental health. It is that bad. People just don't give any significance to it. One of the things that I had decided, and most of you who are regular will be aware, that even though this program is just for an hour and now, as I've announced, we will even shut it down you know, as long as, you know, we have discussed all the answers. We will not wait for the, you know, the clock to be striking 12. So after the break, what we do is we start off with the question answer, the interactions and all that. And the moment I find that it is over, whatever the time it uh, will be, we'll just shut it off so that the next few minutes you can close your eyes and give a rest to your eyes and your body and stuff like that. In fact, when I finish this, I've got a little, you know, restroom. I just walk into it, lie down for two, three minutes, close my eyes, lie down. Then I have a glass of water. Then I wash my face and then I get back to my regular work. I want all of you to please do that. Get into that, uh, you know, habit. So with that, I will ask Purni to strain her eyes while I rest my eyes and I have a nice refreshing cup of tea. Good morning. So, how do I de-stress myself? What I do, you know, very often, I just switch off the phone after dinner or when I'm about to go to sleep or something, you know. I do that. I just switch it off totally and um, then uh, start it only in the morning. Because I feel bad for the cell phone. Poor fellow is working for me. 
right from morning till evening 24 bar 7 we charge it 100 percent and then we use it till zero percent then we charge it to 100 percent then we use it till zero percent no so not fair to it right we as human beings also want some rest so that fellow papa has to have some rest no so what i do is i switch off my phone in the night number of times or i just restart and just put it aside somewhere the uh, other day uh, you know i uh, had been to a restaurant and then i saw that there were like four boys sitting on you know four uh, chairs in the on the table uh, and the table and all the four of them had mobiles in their hands and all the four of them were not talking to each other at all now imagine you are in the company of friends and you have come there so that you can have nice uh, you know hot snacks or food or something like that and then you find that all of them like they're so busy with the uh, you know with their phones that they are not at all bothered about what's uh, happening no, this can be a little dangerous signs, no, about this. And I also want you to just think, um, I'm sure you will be a little more aware from here on that um, many a times, even yes, of course, we find that, you know, many people, they put their uh, earphones. Now, now, some of them get good quality earphones to cut out all the sound. Now, when you cut out all the sound, even if the dhobi comes, milkman comes or your mother has to tell you that come to the dining table, dinner is ready. She screams and screams, but nobody is listening to her at all. Right. So and that's not a nice thing no, to do. So it's important that we have to somewhere detox ourselves from the stresses of screen time. So I'll give you one suggestion from my side. You know what's happening today at Banjara? We are having a day-long workshop on learning difficulties. You know, different children have learning difficulties. And this whole day is actually going to be without absolutely any screen time at all. Because there are activities. Uh, there is going to be a lot of interaction. There is going to be introspection, brainstorming, discussions, and different, you know, uh, what do you say, questionnaires, mulling. So just imagine a whole day. So do you want to take the test that can you be without a phone the whole day? And see, also, we are giving these lessons to our youngsters now. So they are going to learn that their life is only with phones. And the more they are on phones and the more they keep it closed, the more the stress is. And, you know, Ali was mentioning what are the boons and banes of using uh, your gadgets and technology in the right way, wrong way. So if you think you want to detox your bacha party, we have an excellent life skills camp, um, which is called Youngs and Blossoms. Youngs is for the teenagers, adolescents, and Blossoms is for the Chotu fellows. We have seen that many parents come and tell, no, ma'am, he, uh, he will be, you know, using his phone. We say, doesn't matter. Let him leave his phone in the bag. Two hours of such fun activities, team plays, individual, everything, and those kids have actually forgotten their mobiles. They don't even check their phone even once in the two, two and a half hours. So attempt such activities, you know, where they actually feel people in and around uh, them. They can see their smile. They can be with them. And what information that our Google grandma, I call her grandma because earlier, if you had cold or cough or stomach upset, you will go to your grandma. She'll give you some kashaya and you are better. Now, even though we have everybody, we will trust Google and YouTube more, right? So if you want them to be away, this is an excellent uh, opportunity. They can spend their uh, summer time effectively and also without uh, uh, gadgets, detox them, right? So that is about me from my side, about my methods of de-stressing myself. You know, many times what I also do is just to uh, let you know, if I'm sitting on the table or something, and if I've got earplugs, I keep the um, uh, telephone, the cell, at least, you know, one and a half, two feet away, two feet away. And then I listen to something or then I work on it. 
so that itself you know uh, give very less stress otherwise you feel too much no after a while your eyes are also tired not worth the while yeah and then now you may have so many questions what do i do what if this what if that and to answer them all i hand over this session over to ali see you soon bye Hi, again. Uh, Anish will update you at the end of the program that we have a couple of minor changes. On 22nd, the program will not be at 11. It will be at 11.30. There is an excellent uh, you know, fest being organized by Deccan Herald called Eduverse for career guidance. So they wanted me to inaugurate and give the keynote address, which I will finish by 11, so that by the time I come back to office, it will be 11.15, 11.20. So we are instead of 11 to 12 on 22nd, we will have at uh, you know 11:30 to 12:30 instead of 11 to uh, 12. And the week after that, 29th, I also want to take a break from the screen. So there will be no session on 29th of uh, uh, April. And then from the next week onwards, we continue every Saturday 11 to 12. And now I have. Chandrika admitting, oh my God, never thought of myself as an addict. You're not the only one, Chandrika. All alcoholics whom I have met, they always smile and say, I'm a social drinker. I'm not an addict. So we had years and decades of experience with those people. The only thing is that the thing has changed from alcohol to the <coughs> screen. But many of them are, many of us are already addicts. Many of us are on the way to be addicts. And even those who are not addicts, we are straining ourselves. We are getting intoxicated by the screen, which can have very bad long-term effects. Anjana says, studies have been on screen by schools. Text and notes are being used to minimum what can be done. Yes, we can't change the system. And you know, wherever it is absolutely necessary, we have to do. Uh, things, but haven't we always been exploring and finding out within ourselves what we can do? So these simple things, like I told you, where to keep the screen, how to maintain the distance, how to sit, and what is the posture, or how to take those little uh, breaks, even if there is a class or studies or something, you know, going on. Thirty seconds, if you can switch off the uh, visual part of it or close your eyes, even that uh, you know helps. Or like I was telling you, every Saturday after this session, I just go and stretch myself out for five minutes, close my eyes. And these are all the little, little ways by which we can reduce the impact of what we are being forced to be in front of a screen. Surekha says, uncontrolled screen time casts a toxic hypnotic spell. Yes, very much. We hide behind the screen rather than face the harsh realities of life and emerge stronger. If we don't program our mind, the screen will program it. That's what I said about artificial intelligence. Excellent tool, but what about our real intelligence? Are we cutting down our real intelligence? The other day we had to go for a workshop into Tamil Nadu. I had two friends with me in the car. I vaguely knew the uh, place because I had been there a couple of times very, very long back. I knew that at one particular place, there is a junction where you have to take a left turn. The only thing is, on the last time that I had gone there, a flyover had come. And so that junction was not very clearly visible. I told these people, can we stop and inquire? Here, there is going to be a fork, and I think we need to take a left junction. You know what both of them did? They went to that grandma that Purnima was talking about, Google. And I don't know what instruction the Google gave them. We kept going on the highway. Believe me, for 30 kilometers. And I'm looking left and right, and I'm seeing the you know, places and all that. And I'm getting a doubt. I said, hey, this is not taking us to the destination that we want to. And they checked again, and they found that we had gone 30 kilometers on the wrong road. We had to turn back and come back. This is what I mean by saying. 
use technology, use screens to help you. Let them not become your masters. And it was so convenient to just stop for 30 seconds and ask some shopkeeper or some person there on the uh, road, ke baba, this is where we have to go, you know, which direction. And he would have said, take a left or go over the flyover, but take a roundabout and go this way. That's all we needed to do, right? Rina says, I usually listen to old English and Hindi songs on my mobile phone. Excellent, Rina. Here is a good example of the kids from the younger generation who are teaching us certain things. A lot of it can be done. Why only, uh, you know, songs and all that? Even if you're interested in learning something, you have a guru or you have some motivational speaker or somebody who's, uh, you know, you want to gain some knowledge from them. Put the uh, phone to the uh, side. Don't look at the screen and listen. Once in a while, if it is needed, if some visual is being shown, you can look at it. <coughs> but otherwise, for example, this very program, you don't have to keep staring at my face. Only when I put on that graphic, you could look at the screen. Otherwise, you can sit there happily, turn your eyes away from the screen. My voice is loud and clear. You can listen to it. But you know what? If you get addicted to the screen, your attention goes off the moment you look away. That itself should be a warning sign to you. Surekha says, ordinary people succumb to screen addiction. Extraordinary people adore education and good books. Yes, Surekha, I can't overemphasize the importance of books. People may call me outdated or whatever it is. I still tell you books are your best friends. Books have so many advantages, which the screen just does not have. I don't want to go too much in detail of that. But if you people who have given up can get back to the reading habit, even minutely, even you know, for a short while, it will make wonders. Hmm. Jayati says, yes, ma'am, even going to a restaurant, find my husband only glued to the mobile. It's so irritating. I feel so stupid looking at him, expecting him to at least talk to me. But alas, I think he will talk to you if you make a video call to him, you know, from next uh, to him. And then he will start talking to you because he can stare at you from the uh, screen. But jokes apart, that is what is happening. Children are being influenced so badly seeing their parents perpetually on the screen when they are having a holiday, when they are going to a restaurant, when they are going for a walk. Please do not set such bad examples. Akila says, after the pandemic, schools have also started sending all the notes, revision, and timetable. Almost everything related to academics is sent on WhatsApp or some digital platforms like Smart Class, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, and so many. How do we control this? Putting an end is difficult. There must be some way out. What can be done? Students end up using mobile or computer. Agreed, Akira, putting an end is difficult. But minimizing it definitely can be done. Start looking at ways and means. Firstly, wherever you can use a bigger screen, please do that. I still do all my work on a desktop because that has got a bigger screen than the laptop. And I adjust my chair, I push back, I relax. And because the uh, you know, desktop does not, uh, you know, go carry with me. When I want to move out, when I want to discuss with somebody, my eyes go away from the uh, screen. Certain things which you feel, maybe a timetable or something, download it, take a hard copy or a printout and keep it on your notice board so that you can look at it whenever you want to. You need not keep going back on it. Like that, there are a lot of small, small ways by which we can minimize the use of the screen. Keep looking for innovative ways. Hmm. Vinita says, yes, very true, Ali and Purnima. Before we realize we are getting addicted to screen, yesterday after a long time, we went to watch this John Wick movie. You'll be surprised to know many of them, I am talking about adults who are all the time busy on their phones. God only knows what important work they were busy at. Maybe I think even God doesn't know nowadays. It is gone to such extreme. That is what FOMO is all about. No, I have to check 
my WhatsApp messages. I have to check forwards. I have to watch those. You know, that is the reason why most of these Instagrams and this and that have cut down videos to 30 seconds and 90 seconds because they know that people's attention span has come down to that. But in those 90 seconds, they produce such fascinating videos that you can't resist watching them. And not even once, sometimes some of them, you watch them a number of times. You forward to your friends, then your friends send you something because they feel compelled that. It's like, you know, if I give a gift to a friend, the friend also feels obliged to give a gift. So when you send a video to somebody, they feel obliged to send you back a video. And you cannot resist, uh, you know, watching it. I am not on any social media. And even in my email, if I find somebody has not typed a message, but has just, you know, attached a video, I delete it. It may be important. It may be having a lot of significance. It doesn't matter to me. I am not interested in forwards and continuously straining my eyes with those uh, things. Hmm. Vinita says, and sometimes how to tell children or our children too to reduce their screen time. Don't tell them, Vinita. Be a role model, firstly. Secondly, very important, give them alternatives. I gave you a small example when Akila said about, you know, timetables and this and that being sent by, uh, you know, through the screen. I can take a printout of that timetable and enlarge one that too. Put it up on the notice board inside the child's uh, uh, room and say, have a look at it, highlight what is done, cross out the you know, events that are uh, over. It becomes interactive. The child gets involved and it doesn't strain the eyes. Otherwise, every time he'll keep going back to that you know, uh, thing on the screen and checking out what next, what is the timetable for tomorrow, what are the other periods, all these uh, uh, things. So we can individually in our own way make those efforts provided you use your own intelligence and not artificial intelligence. Jayati says, my husband is becoming a total, total addict. How to help him? I am clueless. He's very adamant too. He will laugh and tell me family members should never be counseled. That is one thing I agree with Jayati. Family members and more so spouse cannot be counseled. On the other hand, as you have seen, if you try to tell him more than once, he will actually get a little irritated or he will switch off from listening uh, to you. People have learned that you can switch off mobile phones, but more people switch off their minds than the mobile phones. When somebody is saying something which I don't like, I mentally switch off my mind and I focus on something uh, else or I stare at the uh, screen. But yes, if there is somebody knowledgeable, somebody whom he trusts, somebody whom he has faith in, if you can tell that person to caution him very gently, creating an inner awareness, I think that will go a very long way, right? Roshan says, something wonderful happened while listening to Ali's talk. I went off to sleep for 10 minutes and got up refreshed before 11.30. I've seen how a village detox them, themselves from screens. During dinner break, they are made to switch off their cell phones, TVs, and all screens till they finish their dinner. Another family, wife or mother, will first take the cell phone and then serve them food. After they have completely finished, only then cell phones are given back. Excellent, Roshan. Very nice, simple tips, examples, which all of us can follow in some form or the other. It's not as difficult as we think. But the prime thing in this is to remember is to give alternatives. The child who is used to staring at the screen while having dinner, if you are taking away the mobile of the child. Make sure that the child's mind is attracted. Have a conversation which is of interest to the child. Tell each person to you know, narrate a joke. Have an antakshvi. Do whatever comes to your mind. But see to it that the alternatives are as attractive as staring at the screen. Sri Devi says the young adults prefer Google over mentors. In the process, human touch is lost. Whereas we were taught all the learning should be passed to you by Guru who played a significant role in our life. Yes, Sri Devi, not only that, but Gurus also have become tech savvy now. 
So instead of going and meeting a guru and you know feeling his warmth and presence or anything, I will just watch his videos. And there are enough and more gurus who are, you know, using technology to spread their message and to reach out to more and more uh, uh, people. I've got nothing against that. But as I said, if that becomes your primary uh, thing, if when you are not able to be in the presence of the guru and you watch his video, it's fine. Secondly, you don't have to watch his video. You only have to listen to his discourse, isn't it? So can you take your eyes away from uh, that? So many simple ways. Can you motivate yourself? Can you form a group if 10 of you or three of you have the same guru? Can you sit and have a discussion group where you say, OK, this is what he had said. What do you feel about it? Time passes off beautifully and you do a lot of learning. Ah, Alice has a very good suggestion. People do fasting for good health. They should do fasting from Internet for good mental health. Excellent suggestion, Alice. I really wish more and more of us take that up. Karthik says, after spending hours in front of computer for completing the work, I feel like not interested in other activities. Felt like sitting in front of the computer again or watch mobile. Yes, Karthik, because that's your comfort zone. That's what you got used to it. If you got used to junk food, for example, if you order pizza every day and sit at home and eat it, if your wife, mother, sister, somebody cooks something which is very, you know, nice, hot, fresh, and tasty, you say, no, I would rather order pizza. So that also is a form of addiction where, you know, you cannot get away. Although your work is over, you can now switch off the laptop or the uh, phone and get down to other activities. So you have to make those efforts. Jayati says, nowadays, most of the time I find young parents put their iPads or mobile switch on with cartoons, etc. to feed the child, making their job easy. Reasons they give, child doesn't eat. It's a very, very, very dangerous thing that we are doing. We are playing with the life of a small child. Today, if the child doesn't eat, unless you put a video in front of uh, uh, him, you are literally creating a monster. Tomorrow he will say, unless you buy me a bike, I will not go to college. I will not study. Anything can happen. Please be aware that at that vulnerable and influenced civil age, if you are succumbing to this, how long will the child not eat? If the child throws a tantrum and says, I don't want to eat unless you give me the screen, you say, okay, don't eat. The food is kept over here. It is nice and hot. So if you have it right now, it will be very refreshing. But even cold food is good enough. It will remain on the table till you decide. Believe me, after a few hours, the child will quietly come and eat the food and go away. Or next time the child will say, okay, give me the uh, food. And this has to be done you know, step by step. If you have already been used to putting the child in front of the screen, you don't stop it altogether. You just say, Eat for five minutes and then I'll put the screen in front of you. Start with small things like uh, that. Or he has finished his food and you're giving him dessert. At that time, say, I will give you dessert only if you switch off the uh, uh, screen. These are small but very effective ways of you know, influencing and reaching out to children. Provided we are a good role model, never underestimate that. Okay, we've had some very nice, not only questions, but very nice suggestions today. I have made a note uh, of what things that you people have said. I'm going to incorporate it in my notes and my, you know, uh, whenever I'm going to be talking to other people about it. I'm very thankful to each one of you who came out with this, uh, you know, very nice uh, points. Keep up that attitude. I want you to think. I want you to participate. I want you to come out with your opinions and stuff like that. So if you do that, I'm going to be very happy. And with that, since the questions and comments have come to an end, we will wind up and I will take your leave. And Anis will put up this one or two important announcements of topics, etc. Bye bye. See you. Yeah.